Madison Street. It's one of Seattle's oldest thoroughfares, spanning from the days of horseback and shoe leather through the era of cable cars and into the 21st century. Follow the trail. First it was a trail, and then later on, of course, a cable or electric line to the lake. Junius Rochester is an author and historian. He's devoted his life to understanding and writing about Seattle's past. He says Madison Street came about because of John McGilvra. He came out here to establish a farm for his family, but he needed to get to work. He was the key attorney for the area, so he improved on his own the so-called Indian Trail to the downtown of Seattle. Later on, it, it got wide enough to take a horse and buggy through, and then it grew into a cable line later on. From its earliest incarnation as a trail and right up to the present, Madison Street has connected Saltwater Elliott Bay to freshwater Lake Washington. It starts out to be the center of the old city at the Coleman Building, right down on the waterfront, Elliott Bay and all that, and then moves on up to what's called First Hill or Yesler Hill, or, and then it continues on to Second Hill, and then past what is called the Arboretum, and then over the hump in what is Pope and Talbot country, right behind me, by the way, which is a closed community today called Broadmoor, and then down, zoom, downhill, right to where we're standing at the edge of the water here on Lake Washington. It has always been a very important linkage connecting from the east side, Madison Park, all the way to the waterfront. So it's, I think it's our only east-west um, street that continuously connects from Elliott Bay to Lake Washington. As city traffic engineer, Dong Ho Chang is more concerned with the future of Madison Street than he is with its past. Madison Street initially had a set of cable cars, two lines that connected along the entire length of Madison. And then it got upgraded to the electric trolley lines that we currently see today. We are now looking to improve that. There'll be a full reconstruction of the streets. We'll be improving really the condition for people who are walking, biking, and taking transit. Junius Rochester says that Madison Street has always been about transportation. The busy route helped Madison Park become a popular destination for recreation and merriment, so much so that it discouraged the famous Olmsted brothers from including the park in their grandiose plans for Seattle. They decided that this was too much of a kind of a circus atmosphere. Dad Wagner's band, people like my father sleeping in tents, swimming and yelling and bicycle races and a little golf course and noise. So they did not include this as part of the uh, activity for a park system that the Olmsted were designing. For decades, especially before the Lake Washington floating bridges, Madison was also a jumping off point for the east side. I remember that there was a ferry there that connected Seattle with Kirkland. And that was fascinating because we went to Madison Park and to watch the ferry come and go. The Reverend Dr. Phyllis Beaumonti grew up in the central area, and she remembers places that were community fixtures along Madison. The barbershops and the restaurants and the roller rink and the YWCA affiliate Phyllis Sweetly. Another fixture on Madison is Mount Zion Baptist Church, where Reverend Dr. Beaumonti is associate minister. Mount Zion's been part of the community for more than 100 years. Mount Zion was the hub of civil rights as it relates to meetings, uh, leadership, hope for the future for African Americans who suffered a lot of uh, oppression. Mount Zion has always stood as a beacon of hope and faith, uh, not just for African Americans, but for all people. The African American community in the central area traces its roots to the 19th century. And then, as a result of redlining, a now illegal way to exclude minorities from owning property, the central area became the city's de facto African American neighborhood. I would say that it brought forward a sense of love for one another, and with that love came a desire for equality and to work together to bring about change, and which they did. For Reverend Beaumonti, Madison Street was and remains much more than just a 66-foot wide transportation corridor. Madison Street was a central locator for directions east, west, north, and south. And Madison Street is still an important street in the history of Seattle, I believe. Junius Rochester shares his high regard for Madison Street. The importance of Seattle history is a story mostly of transportation. That is, cable car, automobile, ferry, and of course the Mosquito Fleet, which was, wasn't exactly a ferry except it was a passenger ferry. So it was a way to get across the lake into other locations that are now part of our world. 
Back at the municipal archives, Dong Ho Chang says that with improvements ahead for enhanced bus service, Madison Street is coming full circle to its original role. And hey, how about bringing back those cable cars? But no, no cable cars coming back to Madison as far as you know? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs>